In my previous video, I talked about how people would receive money from the federal government without really doing anything at all. It was called the dole, right? Well, as I said, the FDR administration was not very comfortable doing it, so they needed to figure out ways to do it that seemed more, well, let's just say American, right? One was with, it's called the, Civil, the Civilian Conservation Corps, the CCC. And basically what it did is it took men 18 to 25 years old and effectively put them in the American military. You go, you leave your home, you live in what amounts to a military camp where you're clothed, fed, and housed, and you work on conservation projects. That's something that Cousin Teddy would do, right? So could FDR, so could FDR. Why? Because he loved conservation as much as, as Teddy did. They were paid a little bit of money, something like uh, 20 bucks a month, most of which, however, was not given to the worker. It was given to the families. Why? Because of the fact that the worker is already housed, fed, and clothed. I mean, they, you know, what money do you need? Uh, their basic needs were, are already taken care of. So the families got the money. Now, the CCC lasted between 1930 and 1940. Sorry, 1933 to 1940. And in 1940, the United States had a lot better option when it came to young men to do. That is, of course, going into the military. Two and a quarter million Americans were part of this at one point or another. Now, it provided relief, but instead of just handing out money, it actually made people work for that money. And there are CCC camps all over the place. Another type of relief work is called public work relief, and this began in 1933 with what's known as the Public Works Administration. It's a government agency that has a huge amount to work with, $3 billion, and it was basically used to make construction projects, dams, roads, hospitals, municipal buildings. How is it relief? Well, if the government is pouring money into these construction projects, it has to hire people. So people are having to work for their money, and something worthwhile is coming about. The problem with the PD, PWA is, in order to plan and do something like this, it takes time. And the first man who ran the, the PWA was a very good public servant. He did not want to waste a single public dollar. So he would not move until every detail had been taken care of. It had to be carefully planned, so it took time. Now, normally this would be a good thing, but what's the problem here? They're not spending the money quick enough. So this will lead to another kind of relief called work relief, perhaps the most controversial. Basically, the first work, first work relief program was known as the Civil Works Administration. It had a lot of money, and it basically used that money to hire people to do uh, just about anything and call it work. Basically, making up something for somebody to do and pay them. It doesn't create anything in terms of a lasting value, although some on occasion did. We're talking about things like cleaning up school, school playgrounds on a daily basis. It was needed because there were so many unemployed people, and they needed to get the money out there quickly. They hired people to rake leaves. Well, it was criticized, but it was making, uh, it was making up something for people to do. And so what's more American? Having someone pay you for doing nothing or having you get paid for doing something? Work relief is trying to save the American work ethic. It just shows how non-radical the New Deal was. Now, the CWA gets a lot of criticism, and it actually ends in the spring of 1934. But keep this work relief in mind, because it's not going to be the end of this kind. This particular agency, however, was done. This is something interesting, interesting to note. Roosevelt phased out the CWA projects from the south up as no as winter faded away and as the, it got warmer, saying that nobody starved in warm weather. Not sure I follow the quite you know follow that logic so much, but that's what he said. Now something also had to be done with agriculture, and thus we were going to have what's known as the first Agricultural Adjustment Act. Of course, they didn't call it the first Agricultural Adjustment Act. It's because of the fact we have a second one later on. But nevertheless, the people who passed it, the Agri Agricultural Adjustment Act. Does anybody remember what the, the original problem of agriculture in this country before the Great Depression was? Right, it was overproducing, and it was going to depress, depress prices when it came to their product. Well, basically what's going to happen is we're going to have farmers basically be paid not to farm. 
All right. And, they, and so we, what we have, we have there for are Americans that are hungry and they're poorly clothed. Yet the federal government's going to go in and actually they're going to actually destroy crops. They're going to, you know, for food, for clothing, and also not to mention animals. Right. What's all of this supposed to be about? It was supposed to be about basically raising prices by decreasing the supply. I mean, we have big time starvation here in this country and we're destroying crops. This might sound confusing, but let's think about the poor animals first. You know, back then, most farmers were used were using plow were using mules to plow their land. And for the, all of their lives, mules were taught don't step on the plants, right? Now they're being told to go and step on those plants, plants, and guess what? The farmers are beating these poor these poor animals almost to death to pile them up. So if it's confusing to people, think about the animals. Now the AAA does not bring the agriculture out of the depression that it that it was in. I think it most you could say that it got it cut, stopped things from getting worse. And there and there's another thing. What does this make agriculture when the government? pays people to limit production. It makes it a subsidized industry. Yes, it's private enterprise, but the government is supporting it. Agriculture became, therefore, a subsidized industry. Now, something also had to be done in the area of industry. And there was a major measure for industrial recovery called the National Industrial Recovery Act. And by the way, the NIRA was administered by the National Recovery Administration, or the NRA. Don't, of course, confuse it with the National Rifle Association. And basically, what the NIRA is called for was nothing less than the planning of the entire, agri excuse me, the entire American industrial economy. Think about it. What's the definition of industry? It's huge, right? From dog food to a broom handle, right? To burlesque. Essentially, what it tried to do was with these plants was to cut production, limit production, limit competition, and raise prices, prices through you know through the codes in every area of a country's industry. Now, I have to ask you: Does make does raising prices in every area in this country make sense to you? See, it's sort of like when we were talking about describing food and fiber when people are hungry and, cl and poorly clothed. Well, it might not make a lot of sense on the surface. Let me try to tell you, let me try to relate how it relates to something that I've been talking about overall. We talked about the capitalistic system needing two types of spending, right? Investor and consumer spending. Now, if you say to a businessman that they can limit production, limit competition, and raise prices, what that is trying to do is get, the, is get that businessman to invest. This was an attempt to get investment spending by encouraging businessmen through these types of proposals. You see how it works. Well, if you get the businessman to invest into these proposals, what does that mean in relation to jobs? Well, that means more jobs. And then, of course, you can get more raw materials, which in turn helps the economy. When people have jobs, that allows them to consume. This might not be the best idea now, but you can at least understand the politics behind it. The NIRA is going to pass, and it comes it basically is going to have five over 550 codes of things for like the dog industry and the broomstick industry. This went a long way to help build confidence, especially through advertising. Now, something also had to be done about housing. Remember that people are losing their jobs. And when you lose your job, you can't pay your mortgage, right? So people are starting to actually foreclose on their mortgages. By the 1930s, foreclosures are reaching 1,000 a day. And it's bothersome to lose your home, of course. Now, to try to deal with this, Congress passes what's known as the Homeowners Loan Act of 1933. It creates the Homeowners Loan Corporation. And basically what it did was refinance mortgages, particularly on urban homes. So, for example, let's say that you're getting close to almost not being able to live in your home because you're not making enough money. Well, the federal government would do is they would go to your bank and they would actually buy your mortgage. Now, how did the federal government buy their mor buy your mortgage? Well, through those nice fancy bonds, you know, those fancy $100 bills that you got from your grandparents when you turned five and you can't use them for like 20 years. That's what they gave them. So now the federal government owns your home. It, ha it has control of your home. Now, what are they going to do with that? Well, they're going to renegotiate your mortgage. So how do you do it? How do you refinance your mortgage? Well, if you refinance your mortgage, you're basically pressing the reset button. And so now what you're doing is you're, you're, you're going to 
reset the term. Usually it's about a 30 year term. Well, if you reset the, the, the number of years that you have to pay, that's automatically going to bring down your monthly rates in terms, in terms of how much you owe. On top of that, they're going to renegotiate the interest of your loan. That's the second way to, redu to reduce your mortgage, by lowering the interest rates. This idea was a very good one, and it worked. It was responsible for finan refinancing one out of three urban homes in the United States. It worked extremely well. The country's economy picks back up in the 1940s, and the homeowner's loan corporation was able to get back more money in order to pay back the mortgage payments, mortgage kind of, excuse me, the bonds that they gave them. The HOLC lasted well after World War II, and they basically didn't lose much money. It wasn't as expensive as you would think. Now, Another thing that's going to happen is we're going to have the Tennessee Valley Authority. And for those of you that think that FDR is a socialist, well, this is the one area where you can actually say, you know what, this is, comes close at least. You see, this is, the Tennessee Valley is one of the most poverty-stricken areas in the entirety of the United States. Why is that? Because the Tennessee River continually floods, and you continually have to rebuild your house, right? So a lot of these people... They have to build their houses over and over and over. They don't have that much money to left over. Uh, so the federal government's going to come in, and they're going to actually uh, create what's known as the Tennessee Valley Authority. Because what are the, you know, how do you control a river's flooding? You do it through dams, right? And there's one other benefit that a dam can do, right? It can make hydroelectric power, and that's exactly what happens. The Tennessee Valley Authority controls the flooding of the Tennessee River, but it also provides electricity for those people that live in the very in the area and have never had electricity before. Now, what's going to happen is, is that they are going to produce this electricity and sell it on the open market. So here you have a government agency in direct competition with private enterprise. What's that called? Mm, gee, starts with an S, ends with an M, as socialist in the middle. Yeah, that's called socialism, right? That's really the only, uh, what do I want to say, uh, rung of the FDR and his New Deal with a socialist uh, program. Uh, this is really the only way you can actually say that that he was a socialist because 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 of it. Uh, but this is the one of the most radical proposals of the New Deal. But nevertheless. It, it's going to improve a lot of people's lives.